Hi everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to let the beauty of nature help you design your cards at home. My name's Terry, and I'm nuts about stamping. I love sharing the delight of rubber stamping, scrapbooking, and paper crafting with you each week. And in this particular video, I'm going to introduce the Northern Lights technique, and I'm going to use my snow front stamp set to help me design my card. Now, I don't know if you've been fortunate enough to see the Northern Lights, but I have. I grew up in Canada, in Northern Alberta, and I saw many nights in the winter where the Northern Lights sort of danced across the sky and absolutely wowed me. And four years ago, I went to Iceland on a trip specifically to see the Northern Lights. While I was there, I did see the Northern Lights and I took a photo and I used that photo to help me design this card that I'm going to share with you. And these are the colors I chose based on the colors that I saw in my photo. Granny Apple Green, Cherry Cobbler, Crushed Curry, and Basic Gray. So let me show you this technique. You want to start with a piece of Whisper White cardstock and as you can tell, I've got a really well used or well loved piece of grid paper. And I'm going to use this piece of grid paper because I'm going to be sponging all around the four sides of this card. I'm going to start off with my lightest color, which is crushed curry, or at least that's the color I choose to start off with. And I'm going to use one of my Stampin' sponges. I'm going to ink up the sponge dab off a little bit of color and then I am going to pull this color around my card like so. Now you can make it as dark as you like or as light as you like. It's your decision because it's your card. I'm going to set that aside for a second and I'm going to bring in cherry, no, I'm going to bring in granny apple green next. And I have another sponge that I'm going to use for this. And again, what I want to do for this one is I am going to just go above and below the yellow that I've got on my card. So it's the yellow is the brightest and then the green is just sort of going to be, whoops, a little bit of an accent. A little bit darker than I wanted, but that's okay. And now I'm going to use Cherry Cobbler. I think the really fun part about this card is that every time you try this technique, you can use different colors and come up with a completely different design in the end. I'm going to just put a little bit towards the top, like so. Now. You may think, that doesn't really look like the Northern Lights. Trust me, it will. Now I'm going to bring in Basic Gray, and I'm going to take another sponge, and what I'm going to do is I am just going to, in a circular motion, I am going to start applying the gray all around the outside edges and then a little bit even on top of the color that I've already applied to my card. So I will just keep applying and applying and applying and then I'll show you the next step in this process. Before I begin the next step, I just do want to point out one um, additional piece that I forgot to mention. If you feel after you've added the gray to your card that maybe you want to go back and make your yellow a bit brighter, your green a bit brighter, or your red a bit brighter, now would be the time to do it. That's fine. I like mine quite muted, so I'm going to leave mine as is. Now, I have a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock. And what I'm going to do is I am going to tear it like so and then bring that down like this. Just a random tear. Then I'm going to turn it over and lay it on my card so that the colors of the northern lights are 
more towards the top of the card. All right, I had to adjust my camera a bit because it seemed to be slipping. Sorry about that. All right, so I'm back and now what I'm going to do is I've turned my layer. I've brought in my basic gray. I'm going to hold this in place and then I'm really going to go to town on sponging on top of this layer. It's like a mask and you'll see what's going to happen in a second. So I want to apply a lot of dark color. Sorry for shaking the camera. Maybe that's why it keeps tilting. Okay, so I'm just following the curved line of my torn paper and going to go on all the way and you can do it as dark or as light as you want and then look what happens. I'm going to turn this back. I'm going to lift it and ta-da! I have created sort of a landscape background and now we're ready to finish off the card. I've taken the tree, the large tree image from the Snowfront stamp set. I've mounted it to a clear block and now I'm going to use some of my Tuxedo Black ink and I am going to ink up the tree and then I am going to stamp it down like so. And I'm just doing that image, I'm pressing quite firmly so that it appears as a tree in the foreground with the northern lights and the sky in the background. Now the other thing I'm going to do is bring in the same sponge that I can't see right now, the same sponge that I used with my basic gray. Here it is. <laughs> and I'm going to take some of my memento ink and I'm just going to brush it all around my card. This is going to be a layer for my card actually. And I just want this layer to really be a standout. So I'm brushing this color, this black, all the way around like so. And that really, in my eyes, helps the colors on my card to really pop up. Okay, and now it's time to finish it off. So I decided because I used the black so prominently, I'm going to have a black layer underneath my Whisper White layer. So I'll add that now. And I'm using my multi-purpose liquid glue to adhere that down. Bring that in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. It's just a little crooked. Okay. And then for my card base, I've got ink on my fingers. That is the bad part about this technique. I'm going to use crushed curry as my base. So I'm going to then add more of the multi-purpose liquid glue onto the back of the basic black layer. Turn it over and add it to the front of my card like so. Now, that is the basics for this technique and that was the purpose of my video. Obviously, if you want to add a phrase, if you want to add some embellishments, you are free to do that because it is your card. If you have one of our Stampin' Chalk, Stampin Chalk markers, you can also, here's another one that I did, you can see, I used the same colors, but I had the yellow much more prominently. I think I might have used my blending brushes to start adding the yellow and the green and then switch to my sponges, but I basically followed the same kind of technique steps. And then I added some dots of the white chalk marker to my sky just to add a little bit more like stars or, you know, sort of the movement of the constellations and so on. 
So, if you would like a complete listing of everything I used to make this beautiful technique, head on over to my blog, www.nutsaboutstamping.com. And while you're on my blog, think about subscribing to my free newsletters. I send two newsletters a week with a project idea you won't see anywhere else. And if you would like to learn more techniques, give me a thumbs up or add a note in the comment section underneath this video, because that will give me lots of energy and enthusiasm to bring more techniques your way. I'm Terry. I'm nuts about stamping. I hope you'll try the Northern Lights technique someday soon. Bye for now.